Hi everyone, this is Mo Volans, back for audiotouch.com, and this time we're going to be taking a look at a workflow-based tutorial, something that's going to help you get through your projects, hopefully a little bit more smoothly and, uh, you know, with less issues, playback issues. Um, we're really looking at latency and buffers, so managing latency and managing your buffer settings. Now, if you've been producing for a while, this is probably something that you're pretty familiar with, uh, but I'm still going to show you some tricks and tips, hopefully that, you know, will be useful to you. If you're pretty, you know, if you're pretty much a beginner and you're just starting out, then this is definitely something you're going to need to know about. Um, latency is really the bane of the digital producer's life and something you've got to, you know, manage uh, constantly while you're, you know, uh, working in the box, if you like. And uh, it's really all about delays and the delay between doing something in the external world and hearing it after it's passed through, through the computer, uh, you know, hearing it out of your speakers or your your headphones. There's always latency present in a digital system currently, even though sometimes it's so low that you can't really recognize it as a human being, it's always there. CPU processing takes time. Uh, even if it's, you know, 10 milliseconds, it still takes time. So um, it's about minimizing the delay. And this is what we're going to look at. Now, there's a couple of situations, um, you know, where you're going to experience latency. And there's really one place in any DAW that you're going to set, uh, you're going to set the latency settings or improve the latency settings or improve the latency. Um, and that's generally in preferences. Now I'm working in OSX obviously and working in Logic Pro 10, but you know, you could be working in Cubase on, on, in Windows or in Reason in Windows or on Mac and, it, and you're still going to have very, very similar settings. Um, and generally it's, it's uh, next to your sound driver or audio interface driver settings. You can see I'm using an Apogee Quartet. And then below it, we've got this IO buffer size. And the buffer is really the key to changing latency or changing the delay in your project. Now, currently, I've got a fair few synths running in this project. It's, uh, let me just close the preferences for a second. It's just a loop. But if I open the... Um, the mixer you can see that I've got um, a couple of instruments three playing through a group here a drum machine or drum loop and some mastering processes now the mastering processes are actually going to induce latency because obviously they're on the master channel and everything's got to go through them uh, I think we've got like a Neve compressor and a Millennium EQ and a load of different mastering stuff uh, one of the new Invis AOM limiters. And every time you add a plug into your chain, no matter what it is, or an instrument, extra latency is induced because extra processing has to take place. So the audio has to pass through, or you know, zeros and ones have to be crunched in order for the sound to, to be made. So this is a project, an active project. Obviously, some of your projects are going to be much bigger than this. You might have 100 tracks. You might have 30 virtual instruments. In this case, you're going to have a lot of delay. When you try and play something in, so if I was to make a new synth here or a new instrument, um, let's just get rid of this uh, electric piano and we'll create something new. Let's go with a Fab Filter Twin. Now, when I play the keys here, and we'll just go with a simple sound. There's a delay. Now, obviously, it's hard for you to tell, but when I hit the keyboard, there's a noticeable delay. And this can be a problem. So if you're halfway through a project and you've got delay induced through these other plugins and everything else that you've loaded up, what can you do? Well, I like to call it riding the buffer. Um, and... I'm going to show you another project just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And this is maybe an example of what you might be, where you might be right at the beginning of a project. Now, if I play this electric piano, it's really snappy. And that's because there's no processing. There's only an electric piano. There's nothing on the master output. And there's no inserts on the electric piano. So essentially, it's just that single sound. And we don't have to worry about latency. Now, as we progress through the project, 
we're going to need to change some settings. Now, at the very beginning like this, we can have it at, say, 128 or even 64. And when we uh, change the setting, it takes a little while to catch up and reload the, uh, the drivers. But you can see we've got a 6.7 millisecond round trip. Um, and you're going to hear 3.2 milliseconds on the output, which is very, very low and, you know, is something that's going to feel almost like you're playing hardware. It's going to feel like you're playing a direct synth or piano and you're not really going to notice that sort of latency. You can even even use software recording, software monitoring, sorry, and put a guitar in through effects and not really hear, um, you know, any delay there. Now, the problem starts to occur when you add more synths. So let's just close this down. When we're at this stage and we've got, say, five or six synthesizers loaded or even more, and we've got this incredibly low buffer setting, you might find that, uh, and let's just change this a little, that your CPU starts to go crazy. And this is a 12 core machine here. And if you go onto a, a new instrument track and you start to try and play it in, you'll see that it starts to max out one of the cores. Now this is because we've got an incredibly low buffer setting. So as you can see, as the project progresses, we can't stay at that 64 or 128. We've got to up it. And this is riding the buffer. So generally throughout a project, you're going to find that right at the start, you can have very fast buffer settings you can, and you're going to find it really easy to, to play in uh, synth sounds. But as you move through the project, you're going to need to up this, this value. And what this will do is this will actually increase the latency, but it will reduce any pops and clicks and CPU overloads. This is the payoff. Low buffer size, low latency. But you're probably going to get pops and clicks because you get higher CPU load. So higher buffer settings, higher latency, but lower CPU load. Therefore, less pops and clicks less anomalies and faults in your audio. So if we go to 512, for instance, we can see that this jumps right up to 27 milliseconds round trip. Now, you're going to start to notice this, and it's going to be a problem. But what it does mean is that your project will play back correctly, and it's very likely that you're not going to get any of these uh, nasty CPU overloads. We're going to get a much more evenly distributed CPU usage, and uh, you're not going to get pops and clicks. So I generally find by the end of a really, really busy project, you can be up to a, you know, a thousand and twenty-four uh, buffer setting if needs be, you know, if you've got a lot of stuff running live. Um, and let's just have a look at this. You can see straight away that's halved. We're not going to max that core out, and that's on that's a live mode. So that's great. That means that you can start to play instruments in even at a late stage in your project. So early on in your project, just to clear this up, low buffer settings. Start off at 64 or 128, and then ride the buffer as you go. And this is applicable to Cubase, it's applicable to Reason, really anything, Ableton Live. Um, you know, if you've got an incredibly powerful computer, and this, like I say, is a 12 core Xenon, uh, Xeon, sorry, um, 3.2 gigahertz, I think, or somewhere around there, um, you know, high-end Mac Pro. And I, even I have to ride the buffer, uh, even with, you know, eight cores of UAD and everything else. So you probably will find, if you're on a laptop or you're on an iMac, that you're definitely going to have to do this uh, with busy projects if you're producing everything in the box. Now, the second problem we're going to hit here, and this is where the sort of the, the tips and tricks come in, at this stage, if you up the buffers and you want to record a new instrument or a new guitar take or a vocal take and you've got that delay induced because you've upped the buffers, what can you do? Well, different DAWs provide different solutions. And in the past, what I've done is bounced everything, in, in, imported it to a new project with a very low buffer setting and overdubbed anything I need and then brought those new parts back into the original project. Now, that's a bit of a roundabout way. It's a bit convoluted and it's a bit, a bit of a pain in the butt, to be honest with you. So it's probably better to try other methods first. Um, now, there's something called low latency mode here. I'm just going to switch uh, this back so you can see it. 
Now in Logic Pro 10, if you right click on the bar here, you can pretty much um, customize it exactly how you want. And I've put low latency mode uh, just ticked there. And you can see it's just this little clock here. Now what this does is um, it'll, it'll disable any processors uh, and generally disables things on the master. It actually shows you what's been disabled in orange, but I, I suspect there's a lot more going on than this because what will happen is you'll probably start to get overs on your master output. But by enabling this, you can claw back some of the delay and things will probably go out of time. There are some preferences here for plug-in latency and generally this is set to all. So your instruments and your audio channels are all, uh, the latency is you know compensated and worked out so it's all in time. By plug putting the late, low latency mode on, you might find, and you can look and limit the latency, um, to you know two milliseconds or five milliseconds whatever you feel comfortable playing you might find that some things go out of time some things sound a little wrong um some processes are switched off some instruments sound a bit strange but it's it's okay because it's only while you're recording so generally while we have this engaged you'll find that everything's nice and snappy Yeah, so that organ now feels responsive and you're able to play it in. In this mix, it's not really affecting things too much because there's not a huge amount here. But if you've got a large mix and there's a lot of different processes going on, a lot of different instruments, you might find that this really affects the sound quite heavily. Um, but don't worry about it, like I say, too much. Get on with playing the instrument um, in, get the performance right, switch it off and everything should go back uh, to being hunky-dory and being you know exactly how you would expect it to be and the most important thing is that you were able to play that instrument in without bouncing things down without changing buffer settings without worrying about pops and clicks so you can continue to ride the buffer throughout your project from 64 128 up to through the 500s and into the thousands and even into the 2000s if your computer is really old or <laughs> needs a helping hand um, avoid any pops and clicks, have everything playing in time and hit the, that magic button and you know you should be able to uh, get your performance played in. Now I know that Cubase has a similar plug-in delay compensation uh, you know uh, bypass or whatever and allows you to do something very similar. I'm not 100% sure about Ableton. Um, I've not experienced as much of a problem in Ableton with this sort of thing uh, and reason because it's all in, in board and you know it's all proprietary you really don't get too much of a, a latency issue. The CPU usage is very low in reason. Um, it's really logic and Cubase and Pro Tools. You, you're going to find uh, you need to use these techniques. So hopefully this has uh, you know, helped you understand what I like to call riding the buffer, and ho hopefully it will help you manage your buffer and latency settings. And uh, you know, hopefully the trick about using the, the low latency mode is going to help those of you um, who need to record things in at the, a later stage. Uh, and if you've got any questions, drop a comment. Hopefully I've not over <laughs> overcomplicated things here for you. And uh, if you want to hear anything else on the subject or any other subject, I'm open to suggestions. So thanks very much, guys. Bye.